Well, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our maths extravaganza today. We have got lots of exciting activities to share with you. And uh, hopefully you're going to maybe have a go at these um, once we finish the session as well, either on your own, at home or at school. So the first thing to just remind you about is we do have a chat and we would love you to interact with us and put your answers, any questions that we ask, put that in the chat and then we'll be able to see that directly. Now we have changed the chat so that actually only we can see your responses. So you're not gonna get bombarded with everyone else's chat. You're just gonna see your chat and we'll be able to see it as well. And the other thing just to, to let you know is it's going to be about 40 minutes. So hopefully, um, yeah, you'll, you'll enjoy all the different things we've got to show you. And some of the activities you might want to join in now please do join in with us but you might find it a bit frustrating because you'll be thinking i need more time i need more time so there will be a handout at the end so that you can actually have a go with these activities in your own time so you might just want to sit and watch today and then maybe have a go a bit later uh, once you get the handout so my name is Fiona Goddard and i am as i said really excited to be sharing this session with you today I've also got with me um, a colleague of mine, and I will let him introduce himself. So, um, hello, my name's Andy. Um, I support um, schools generally across England into Wales as well. And so like Fiona, um, I used to work in, in primary education, now work uh, for WIS, doing exciting things like this, which is great fun. Great, thanks Andy. So whilst you've been waiting, what we wanted you to do is to have a go at these estimates. So it's how many? Now, probably no one knows exactly, which is why it's an estimate, but um, yeah, we've chosen a few things for you to have a go at. Now, some of these are some very big numbers. So I don't know if you've been doing this whilst you've been waiting for us to start, but if you haven't, have a go now and tell us in the chat how many you think so how how many feathers on an african parrot or how many times per second do bees flap their wings or how many polar bears do you think are left in the world have a go and once we can start seeing in the chat we'll, we'll share some with you so i'll give you a couple of well a couple of seconds just to start to have a look and let us know what you think i can see one in there already uh fiona somebody's saying a million leaves on a tree a million so, leaves. How okay. close I guess it depends what sort of tree we're talking about, doesn't it? <laughs> it uh, definitely does, yeah. And I guess it also depends whether it's a tree that loses its leaves in the autumn or whether it's a tree that keeps its leaves all year round. So, yeah, okay. Oh, I can see some more coming in, actually, about um, the bee flapping their wings. The chat says there, they think it's about 20 times. Hmm, what do you all think? Please let us know, have another, have another go at one of these guesses. So I was actually trying then to see how many times I could move my hands in a second, because I think a bee is going to go faster than that. Yeah. I can't do that 20 times a second, mind you. So. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're maybe, um, we'll maybe reveal some more um, in, a, in a minute. Just give you a couple more minutes, just have a go. What about stripes on a tiger? I guess you could almost try and count them, couldn't you? What do you think, Andy? Have you had a go at working that one out? Uh, well, you rather than count them all, I'm going to do an estimation. So I'm going to look at one leg. So oh. let's say there's six stripes on one leg. Four legs is 36 then, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, let's count the tail as another one. So, so five, six is on 30. Same for the head, 36. Then 12 more for the, the body. So 48, I'm going to say, yeah, somewhere in the 50s. 50s, okay. Right, okay, we've got someone in the chat as well that's just put that they think a bee flaps their wing, uh, wings per second. This is amazing, a thousand times. Wow, I said 20. So anybody got any other, any other responses? So I'm thinking with that one, the buzzing noise that you hear from bees comes from them moving their wings, doesn't it? So it is yeah. going to be very, very, very fast. Yeah. Do you know what? Should we reveal this one? OK, mm -hmm. so they, they are able to beat them extremely fast, but not quite as fast as a thousand beats per second. It's actually 200 
beats per second. So you, that's why you can't even see it move. It's just a flash, isn't it? So uh, well done. OK, any more responses? I'm thinking that yeah, maybe the person suggesting the thousand. Uh, yeah, maybe your 200 is like an average B. And you know, the Usain Bolt of the B world <laughs> might very well be able to do a thousand. Maybe, maybe. Well, what about stripes on the tiger then? So you you thought around fifty, Andy? Was that yeah, right? Yeah, that, that was my sort of estimate, roughly okay. by just working I'm out. Reveal. Stripes Are you ready for the reveal? It's actually about a hundred stripes, one hundred stripes on a tiger. So. I guess your logic was almost working there, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, I suppose if I count that's one <laughs> side of the tiger. No. Oh, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, true, good. Any others? That's how I worked it out, was it? But, you know, <laughs> I was thinking that. So someone's said coming up in the chat, they've just put the um, eggs that the female turtle lays in a nest. They've put about six. Okay. Any other, any other responses? What about polar bears? How many of those do you think are left in the world? I have a feeling that's going to be a depressingly low number. I would think there'll be lots of them, wouldn't you? But I bet there isn't. The thing is, I don't know how many there were when there were, mm. were a lot more, but yeah. Got, yeah another right. one coming in, 50 eggs. 50 eggs, okay. So, yeah, which is, would be a lot more than your average bird, wouldn't it? So the six would be, yeah, I'm just thinking. Yeah. Chickens' eggs, yeah, you quite likely get six, wouldn't you, all in, all in one go, maybe? Do you know, 50 sounds a, a better guess than mine, actually, because I remember now seeing a documentary where the turtles come out of the sea and up the beach to actually lay their eggs. And then when the eggs hatch, the little turtles have to make that big journey from the nest back to the sea. But obviously there's lots of predators around that might come and get them. So I think maybe 50 might be better guess than mine because there might be quite a few, unfortunately, due to nature and how it works mm. that actually get, um, get eaten um, or taken away or don't quite make it for whatever reason. So that might be a good guess there. Right, okay, Let, well, let's, let's go through. So actually the, um, the turtle with the eggs about 200 oh no hang on i'm just making that up no sorry i've got to 110 eggs but they can do that two to eight times a year they lay those number of eggs so that's a lot of eggs but as i said i think it's that scramble back to the sea um what about the african parrots um now obviously it depends on a bird this isn't the same for every bird but for an african parrot i've got they've got up to eight thousand feathers which is amazing um, number of feathers to have. And they've obviously got those to keep them warm, but also to enable them to fly as well. And then we've said the tiger, the polar bears left in the world. Now this is what scientists estimate. They estimate there are fewer than 26,000. And that's spread across all 19 different subpopulations from the Oh, all different places from Norway to Hudson Bay in Canada to Alaska to Siberia. So they reckon roughly about 26,000. So it's I guess not very really many, is it, for such a big no, area? Really? It's not. Mm. It's not. And then leaves on the tree. We've had one million. Well, once again, it really depends on the tree. But on average, a mature tree, so a fully grown tree, has about 200,000 leaves. As I said, that could vary. So a million, I guess, it was probably a tree with, <laughs> there must be some trees, I'm sure, that have got a million leaves on them. And then um, icebergs. So how old are icebergs? Now, icebergs actually are evolving all the time because of the glaciers and the moving. But once again, scientists say, if I look at my notes, they say it varies, but some can be 10,000 years old. So there we go, some, some really nice little facts there about how many. But the reason we've shared that with you today is because all of these things that we've been talking about could become endangered if we don't look after our environment. And what we've got going on this summer is we've got a summer challenge and it's called Building for a Greener Future. Because we've we, we just felt that it's really important that we're all aware of all the things that we're doing and the possible impact that could have 
on our lovely environment that we've got around us. And I'm sure you've all heard it on the news as well, but if we carry on behaving like we do and don't make some real big changes, then they think by the year 2100, 2100, so, oh, how old will you be then? How many years time is that? Do some quick maths and try and work out how old you'll be. But you'll still be alive. And they estimate that 50% of the world's species could go extinct by then because of climate change. So that's quite a harrowing thought that, um, you know, if we don't change the way we behave with our pollution and things like that, then actually um, these sorts of things could be happening. So anyway, Please have a look for our summer challenge. There are eight mini projects all linked with building for a greener future. And um, it'll be lots of fun to have um, over the summer term and during the summer holidays to do these activities. Right, I'm gonna hand over to you now, Andy. Right, yeah, so we're going to ask you to get involved um, again here. So have a quick look at those pictures while I'm just explaining what to do. I want you to do some thinking and some answering for us on this one. So as Fiona was saying, a lot of um, what we're talking about here is focused around nature. And you might think of maths as just being you know, involved in, you know, in sums and things like that, but maths actually forms the, the building blocks of nature. And there are some amazing patterns in nature. You know, they're not just things that you come across in your shape lessons and things at school. There's some amazing shapes and patterns in the natural world. And some of them you can see in, in uh, you know, make up some really stunning patterns. And these are some of our favorite ones. So what we'd like you to do, and again, to put this into the, into the chat is, first of all, can you name the shape? And second of all, what do you think it's a picture of? So some of these are very, very close up. We might need to think about that as well. And we have numbers on there. So you don't necessarily need to know what the, the picture is of. You could say, for example, I'm not going to give you the answer here, but in picture number one, it's this shape. And I think it is this. So just as I said that right on cue, somebody put in the, in the chat, it's a hexagon and it's a honeycomb, which is perfectly correct. So very close in on a honeycomb, but hexagons and they're, yeah, extremely regular hexagons aren't they as well so what else can we see on there the clue yeah some some are animals some are plants some are neither of those things most of them are Just give me another couple of seconds let's see if we've got the next one coming through someone's just popped in the chat number six they said they can see some circles Yes. I'm uh, wondering if it's a tree trunk. So that's a pretty good guess, I think, there. I think so as well. We've got another one coming in for number two. A giraffe, which I, I'm pretty certain you're correct with that one. An irregular shape. So they are, aren't they? None of those are similar to each other. So irregular polygons, I think we could call those. So, yeah, very good. Yeah, somebody else saying giraffe for that one as well. That's really good. Somebody else suggesting on number four might be hexagons as well. So I think if you ever count the sides of those. Uh, I wonder if they know where it's come from. Because it does look quite woody in texture, doesn't it? Mm. Mm. Yeah, we've just got hexagon for that one. We haven't got what it is yet. So yeah, it looks like a lot of people got the giraffe. I guess maybe people are looking down sort of one, two, three and working their way through. Yeah. You can well, jump what about number three? <laughs> What do we think that is? Ah, right, somebody's, coming out. somebody's come back to me with number four, tortoise. Yeah, I, I think that's exactly right. That's what I would have said it, it was. So these are Fiona's picture. So I'm just looking up to see if she's nodding at me or not. <laughs> Absolutely. Number 10 has just come in. Um, they're saying um, sort of circular patterns. They're not really sure, but I think circular they've put and with a question mark, but then put sunflower. So yeah, well done. Got spirals in there as well, isn't there yeah. as well? Lots oh, of little circles, but arranged in a spiral sort of. Yeah. And we've got number three, um, and they're absolutely right. They've put diamond, which I guess it's really hard to tell, isn't it? But they mm. do, they probably are diamond rhombus maybe. Yeah, but they put snake. Yeah, and they're absolutely right. 
Mm. Um, oh, someone's put a hexagon as well. Yeah, uh, do you know, every, each time I look at a different scale, I sort of um, see a slightly different shape. So, uh, but yeah. I think you could argue both of those, couldn't you? If you look really, really, it depends how big yeah. a screen you're looking on, I guess. Maybe, maybe, yeah. And then we we do have somebody for 11 has got spider's web, but we haven't got a shape for that one yet. So oh, okay. We'd all agree that is a spider's yeah. web. We haven't got a shape for that one yet. Well, what about number seven? I wonder if anyone knows where that comes from. Well, it's a beautiful pattern. Um, and that's once again a spiral, isn't it? Going round and round, but then you can see other shapes in there as well. But uh, anybody have a guess with that one? Oh, yep, someone's just come through. You're absolutely right. It's a cabbage that's been cut through. Yep. And uh, number five is an interesting one because that's actually, um, there's one in Ireland where it's been formed. I think it was down to ice age and earthquakes and all those sorts of natural things that happen. And it's, um, it, I know there's one over there. Ah, oh, there we right. go. Someone's I was just going to say somebody just popped up with the correct name as well. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Uh, yeah, the Giant's Causeway. I think that's incredible that that's naturally formed. It looks like someone's laid lots of paving slabs, isn't it? Um, so very clever. Somebody's just come back with my spider's web as well. It's a quadrilateral for those shapes, which I think is pretty good. Yeah. So they're not quite rectangular, are they? They're not quite right angles in each of the corner of those but yeah pretty good i think that one well I, i'm wondering andy if maybe we leave people guessing because this is in the handout as well so they can carry oh, okay. on having a go at this and maybe we we move on because um we've got lots of other activities to to do so we'll leave that one for you to finish in the handout right so if we move on to this one again we're going to ask for your your input on this so we were looking at, at natural shapes, weren't we, in the natural, sorry, shapes in the natural world on the, on the previous one. And you can see we've got four shapes here. So there's two bits we need to do for this, really. First thing we need to do is make sure that we all know what these shapes are. So we'll do that part first. So you could tell us, for example, you know, the yellow one is whatever you think it is. The blue one is one of these, the red one is one of these and so on. And then we'll reveal when we see the correct answers coming up in the chat for that. And then the second part of thinking we needed to do with that, and there are lots of correct answers for this, there's not just one correct answer, is which one is the odd one out? But more importantly, I guess, why? So what I'm hoping for in that one is not, the first one's the odd one out because it's only, it's the only yellow one. We're hoping more you know, of answers around shape and things for that. So just going, I thought we, I thought we had one of them there, but we're just going back to the, the turtle. Somebody say uh, it was a turtle as opposed to a tortoise. I think both of those we can have as correct. But yeah, what about these shapes here? So we've got this yellow one, the blue one, the red one, the green one. What do we call each of those shapes? Well, I've got yellow as people are putting hexagon, so. I don't know. Are you revealing now, or am I revealing? I'm just, I'm just manipulating my other screen to make sure I'm on the right <laughs> one. So, would you be able to do that? Mine seems to have yeah. just uh, oh, okay. frozen yeah. on me a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah, hexagon, absolutely right. What about the blue shape, or the red shape, or the green one? I'm predicting that people might get the green one first before they get the other two, but I'm, I'm, I'm happily proved wrong on this. Okay, people are coming through, actually, you're right, Andy. People are coming through with triangle, and you're mm -hmm. right. It is a triangle, but I wonder if they can tell us, this triangle's got a special name. I wonder if anyone can tell us the special name. Oh, someone's put right angle, not a right angle. I can't see any right angles there because a right angle is 90 degrees. If you think of your pet sheet of A4 in the corner there, that's a right angle. So we can't see those. Um, or well, some people have been very organised and coming through with all of them. So um, you've got to give those all away. Yeah, should we do them one at a time? Oh, I don't mind. Oh. I'll leave you in charge. Right. Well, I think whoever it was saying about the uh, the right angle, although it wasn't quite the right answer. 
keep that in mind because thinking about the angles in these shapes might help you towards an answer to the second part about which ones are the odd one out and things and give you a good reason for that. But we've got, uh, so we've revealed the hexagon and the triangle. So we've got from a couple of people actually, we've got trapezium. So if you're not sure that one is the trapezium, I've nearly gone to explain why it's a trapezium, but that might have given you an answer to the second part then. So what about the second blue one? I'm not seeing any correct answers there. So we've had parallelogram for number two. Me, not quite. Should we give How that about it? Well, I mean, maybe we can give a clue. All the sides are the same length, so that might help. So that discludes it being a parallelogram, but have a think about what it could be. Shall I do the reveal? I should do the reveal, yeah. Oh, oh, nearly, somebody came up with square there. So if you imagine a square just tipped on its, on its side a little bit, you would have a rhombus, yeah, because all the sides are the same, same length. So what about differences then between them? So as I said, somebody was thinking about angles before, that might be one way to, to approach it. You might want to look at the, the sides of the shape. There might be a, you know, a, range, a range of different um, reasons why. And as I said, there isn't one particular correct answer for this. You know, if you've got a good reason why, that is probably a perfectly correct answer. Can I, I'm going to start it off if that's all okay. right. I'm going to say I think the triangle is the odd one out because it's got less than four sides. Yeah, so we've got two of the other shapes, haven't we, that do have four sides and one that's got more than four sides. So that yeah. one would be that would be a perfectly correct answer. So we've got somebody else come through saying it's the hexagon. I think they're picking up on, on your one there. So the hexagon, because it's got the most sides, it's got six sides. Okay, good. Yeah, both, both correct. I've got someone that come through the trapezium is the odd one out because it has one longer side. That's a good one. Okay, so the yeah. other side on the bottom. Right, I'm not sure if this is, is one, of the, one of the students or if this is one of the teachers. I'm, I'm sure it is one of the students, but they're saying that the angles in the hexagon are all the same. Ah, but the angles in the triangle are all the same, aren't they? They are as well, aren't they? They're different to the ones in the hexagon. But they, are. <laughs> they so are. We, yeah, so we've, we've, got, we've got some good thinking skills going on there. We might be able to do one with parallel sides as well. I wonder if anyone can come up with one with parallel sides. There might be one there. Yep, someone's just said the rhombus is the odd one out because it's the only one that's got two sets of parallel sides. Yep, I think absolutely you've, right. <laughs> you sparked some thinking going on there as well, I think, because somebody said it's a triangle because that doesn't have any parallel sides. Ah. <laughs> ah, but then we could argue that, oh no, the hexagon has. So, I guess has, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. Oh my God. Yes, people could think about how many yeah. sides the different shapes have yeah. got. There's probably an argument there for all of those, though. I wonder if anyone could um, think about anything to do with the angles in these shapes. I'll give you maybe 30 seconds because then we could maybe move on um, to some angles that I want to show you. Oh, awesome, I like yeah. that, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Go ahead, I saw that one, I like that one as well. <laughs> Carry on. So, I, yeah, this is a really nice one. So a triangle has an odd number of sides, the rest have an even number. That's a really nice one. Mm -hmm. I hadn't thought of that one, so well done you. That's a brilliant one. Yeah, I've not got that on my list either. I like how uh, creative people are starting to be by looking at these properties. Well, whilst, whilst we're carrying on with that, shall I move over to the angles? And um, Yes, you can carry on thinking about that. I'll, you, you move over to the angles. I'll keep an eye on the chat. chat okay. Because well, so, this might give people uh, some, you know, another way of thinking about it. Perhaps. These are the shapes that we've just been talking about. And... 
there's something about the angles that um, I want you to have a little think about, maybe put in the chat if you notice it. So if I take the hexagon, and if I, I don't know if you know the size of an angle in a hexagon, if you do, brilliant, put it in the chat now. But my angle measurer here will tell me, there we go. So each, if I switch each of the, let me know if I move it around, each of the angles in a hexagon are 120 degrees. So I wonder, have any of the other shapes that we've got here, do you think, would also have 120 degrees? Let's have a go. So let's, let's try the trapezium. So if we look at the trapezium here, well, this angle is certainly not 120, but if I move my angle measurer, there we go. It is actually, oh, try and get it exact. It's sometimes hard to do with the mouth. There we go, it's 60. But there are some other angles, aren't there, in a trapezium. So if I move this around uh, roughly there, and if I put it so we can actually see then to measure it. So obviously this angle is not 100, uh, sorry, it's not 60, but it's actually, I gave it away then, didn't I? It's actually, 120. Now we've already said the hexagon has got angles of 120. So that's interesting. And then obviously it's that 60, 60, 120, 120. What about a rhombus then? So rhombus, our measure 60. Are you starting to see some connections? And if I spin it around, what do we think this angle will be here? Let's have a look. Oh, do it exact. Let me just move it along. So we've got it exact. Sorry, there we go. So you can see 120. So we've got 120s going all around there. We've got 60, 60. 120, 120, and we know, or do you know what they add up to in a quadrilateral? We've got 60, 60, 120, 120, and our triangle, what have we got here? Now, did we actually say what this triangle's called? Because it's we not didn't, a we triangle, didn't. no. It's we didn't get the answer to that one. Equilateral triangle because all the angles are equal and all of the sides length are equal as well. And the angle is 60. So these three, four shapes, sorry, have something in common. Their angles are either 60 or 120, or some of them have got both. Which leads us on to a nice game we want to play. And I want you to think about why this game really works. Um, and then we're, we're just, We'll disclose a bit more a bit later. So I'm going to go back to our screen and I'm going to leave Andy to introduce our next game. Right, so we're going to play a game. This might be something you want to do, do afterwards as well. So you can see the, the four shapes that Fiona's just been talking about there. If you keep those angles in mind, that might give you some thought, why don't we, when we come to play this. And what we're going to do is, is ask you for some advice on here. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I was going to say, I'm going to play Fiona. I'm going to beat Fiona at this in a moment. Um, and she's probably thinking exactly the same, same thing. Mm -hmm. What we have to do is we take turns at placing just one shape at a time. It has to, to go on the, the game board over on the, the right hand side. It has to fit into the lines there. So you know, if we were going to put a triangle on, for example, in the very top bit, it would have to fit exactly on that, that top triangular piece. But each shape has to touch one of the shapes that's already on there. So obviously the first person will have a go, but then the person who's following on can put it anywhere on the board as long as it touches a shape that's already been placed on there. And the winner is the person who places the piece, so we've got a rhombus there. The winner is the person who puts the last piece on there that completes that rhombus, that fills up the last little space. 
So we can use any of those, those shapes that we've been talking about before. So we've, we've got the, the hexagon, the rhombus, the trapezium, and the triangle. So do you want to have the first go or do you want me to have the first go, Fiona? Um, no, I'm going to have the first go if that's okay. Yeah. Huh? Okay, now I'm going to choose the hexagon because I, I want to cover up a lot of space, but I'm deciding where to go. I think I'm going to place it there. There we go. Okay. Right, so what I need from somebody in the chat. So, you know, we can have team Andy, we can have team Fiona for this one. So if you, you could either tell me which shape, if you want, that might be a little bit sort of long to type, but you could always just say yellow, green, red, blue, that would work as well. And then it's going to be a little bit tricky, isn't it, to, as to where to put it. But I've got to put it somewhere on there where it's touching, whichever shape we choose, it's touching Fiona's yellow hexagon somewhere. So a green one we've got from suggestions. I'm going to use a triangle. Would you like me to put it on the top of the hexagon, the bottom, or on the right-hand side? So we've got somebody saying put one on the top. Right, I'll take that piece of advice. Or oh, somebody else said on the right. Now we'll have to choose. <laughs> I'll go with I'll go with the first choice and go with the, uh, the top. So let me just move that across. So there's my move, I'll put triangle on there. So likewise, you know, you might want to give Fiona some advice at this point as well. Should she go for a bigger shape? Should she go for a little shape? So remember what we're trying to do is, is get the other person to have the last but one go. Oh, so, you know, someone's just read my mind. I was gonna say yellow. Well done, right. Where do you want me to yeah. put it now? I could put it next to the green triangle or I can get it to touch the hexagon that's already there. Um, let's have a look. I'm just, I'm trying to fill. I think I'm going to place it here. I'm trying to fill as much. Oh, sorry. Don't know what happened there. There we go. Can you still see my screen? Okay. Yes, we can still see that. So I'm wondering now whether the best strategy is to try and fill all the big shapes up first. Because <laughs> No, there is. I'm yeah. sure there's going to be some strategy here. We're going to have to start thinking ahead, aren't we, with our moves? We are, because I, I'm thinking, yeah, if, if we just went, so somebody else is saying yellow, we'll go for a yellow then in a moment. I'm just thinking we could possibly, if both of us did the same thing, get two more hexagons on there somewhere. Yeah. So, question is, do I put a hexagon down near the, the bottom? I don't think you've got any choice, actually. Have you uh, I could either put it exactly level with your middle hexagon, or that doesn't quite count, does it? It's only touching at a point. It's got to touch yeah, it. No, it's got it. Right, I haven't got any choice yeah. then. I'm, yeah, we're no. going for a yellow one. We have to put it there. Okay. Right. Well, I'm going to go for a trapezium. Um, and I think I'm going to put it there okay oh you can see some shapes can't you hmm yeah so there's lots of places we could put little green triangles isn't there yeah or we could try a blue rhombus somewhere so we need to think ahead a little bit if that only leaves triangles how many triangles are going to be left and then we need to count backwards and forwards on goes don't we on that one mm. so so oh, we've got said, some, some saying rhombus, some saying upside down mm. triangles, some saying a trapezium. Oh, my gosh. Right. I'm, yeah, I'm going to go for the rhombus because we've not used one of those yet, right. I think. So I'm going to move it around a little bit now. That does just about fit there, I think. OK. Now, I'm just thinking, if I go there, you go there, I go there, you go there, I go there. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm trying to think ahead all the moves. <laughs> mm. So I'm going to go another trapezium and I'm going to place it here. There we go. Right, so I'm going to have a pause here and think about how many possible ways <laughs> there are left to go. So if we just did triangles, there are one, two, three, four, five triangles left. So it would be me, Fiona, me, 
Fiona, me. If I put a rhombus in, that would cover two, those two triangles that are next to each other, wouldn't it? Yeah. That would be my go. Then it would be Fiona, me, Fiona. So I don't really want to do that. So okay. somebody was saying before, upside down triangle, weren't they? Let's let's take that advice this time and I'm going to put the upside down triangle next to and touching that hexagon if I can get that lined up properly. So I'm hoping that person who said upside down triangle has given me the right advice there. Right. Well, should we move quickly now with these because then we can get on. It's I'm all going to be triangles, isn't it? So. It's all going to be triangles. So I'm just going to quickly move mine. Come on, that's it, it's lagging a bit uh, there. Okay. So let me just put one on top of my other one. Okay, so well done, Andy's team. I'm not really a bitter loser, but there we go. <laughs> it was all thanks to that advice. So who, yeah, whichever school or whichever, whichever children were saying um, upside down triangle, thank you very much, because that puts the last one on and that means that Whoever was team Andy won that. So yeah, well that's that was rather good fun. And I think what actually what you did there, Andy, is you started to strategize your move. So you were working out: should I do the rhombus? Should I do the triangle? You were able to work out all the moves because we then had no other choice. So that's another way. But I wonder if I had gone second, whether I would have won, or whether that makes a difference, first or second as well. Um, I was thinking okay. back to a little bit, I don't know if this is what people in chat were doing, I was thinking back to your bit about the angles, because looking at the rhombus, mm. a rhombus I was thinking to myself, a rhombus equals two triangles, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You put them one on top of the other. So that's how I was thinking in terms of numbers of triangles and so on. And also, the other way of thinking about it was um, the trapezium. So two trapezium or two trapezia, I never know what the plural is, but two of those would make a hexagon, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah. Well, so that would be another way of thinking about it. Yeah. And actually that leads us really nicely onto what we're going to very quickly have a look at now. Um, is all those shapes fitted together really well? There was no overlapping, there were no gaps, they were able to fit together for us to play that game. And that was to do with the angles, but it's also got a special name. And if you look at these pictures that you can see on the screen now, once again, these are all fitting together um, and making a pattern. And I wonder if people can tell me what they think that might be called when we can get shapes that fit together without any gaps or any overlapping. Yeah, well done. Yes, yeah, someone's just put tessellations. You're absolutely right, it's tessellating. Uh, or someone's put mosaic. That's an interesting one as well. Yeah. So yes, tessellations are created when shapes are repeated again and again. And here there are lots of examples of different tessellations. You've got the hexagons, lots of them together. And then you've got other tessellations where different shapes are being used. Now, the ones that I'm really intrigued about are the ones on the right hand side where you've well, what jumps out to me is the one with the cat. And I can see a cat and I wonder if you can see there's another animal in there as well. And I wonder if any of you can spot the other animal. Well, I couldn't when you showed me this the first time. So, but they all tessellate, don't they? They're all the same shape, they just and fit it, it together. Yeah, and this isn't a, any regular shape. These are obviously irregular shapes. And the same with the butterflies down below as well. Now, yeah, someone's just put dog. You're absolutely right. Can you see there's the cat and the dog tessellating extremely well. There's an artist called Escher who um, did a lot of um, symmetrical work and tessellation work um, for, for his artwork. And here are a few examples here. You can see, I don't know if it's like a chameleon. I can see a frog and a fish in the middle one and then more fish in, on the right hand side. And obviously these, these are all irregular shapes. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun if we could do something like that? So. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a really easy way to make an irregular tessellation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to pin the, let me just, uh, I'm going to spotlight myself so you can all see me and I'm going to move my laptop so that all you can see now is just my, my table. Now, what you need in order to be able to do 
this is you need a square piece of paper, pencil or a pen, whatever you decide you want to do it in. You need a pair of scissors and some sellotape and then a bigger sheet of paper um, that we're then going to put the tessellation on. So I'm going to do it in pen so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to draw a shape. So you have to start in the corner. That's really important. So I'm starting in the corner and I'm, I've already penciled this on so I don't go wrong. But and then I've got to make sure that I go back to the corner on the same side. OK, so I've gone there to there. Then what I do is get my scissors and very carefully cut, cut the shape out. So there we go, to there, and then hopefully you can see it. If you're not sure about cutting, you can always get an adult to help you. So as you can see, that is the shape that I've drawn. I've just cut out. Now it has to move over exactly as it is to this side here. So I'm gonna move it without flipping it, turning it or doing anything like that. And I'm gonna join it to that side. And I get my sellotape and I'm just going to very carefully sellotape that into position. Okay. Now, just cause I want to make this a really interesting shape. I'm now just going to do exactly the same, starting in another corner. And I'm just going to draw another sort of wiggly line. And once again, I'm going to cut it out. So cut it to here. There we go. Oh, don't know if you can see, just making sure you can see. Oh, it's getting quite fiddling now with the cutting out right to the corner there. So once again, I'm gonna make sure I lay it on the table to make sure I get it right. So this here now has got to go over to this side. So I'm going to move it without twisting or turning and I'm going to add it there. Now, whilst I'm sellotaping this, what we've got to try and do is think, hmm, what, what shape can I see? What could this be? because we're going to turn it into something in a minute. But what I'm going to do now is get my piece of paper and I'll use my pen again, and I'm going to place it on here. And then what I'm going to do, because I want to make my tessellations, I'm going to very carefully draw around what I've just made. So I'm drawing around there, I'm holding it in position carefully so that it doesn't move, because if I move, it will spoil the tessellation that I'm trying to make. So there we go. So there's my first one. Now, if you notice, I can now fit that. That fits perfectly in there. So once again, I'll start to draw around my tessellation. I think the names sometimes to these are called a motive. So each part of it's called a motive. Um, and there we go. And then you'll see here, can you see it fits in here? So I'll draw around and you can do this and fill the whole sheet of paper. Now at the moment, it doesn't look very interesting. All it is is just some patterns there. So I'm thinking, what could that look like? And this is where you can start to use your imagination. And I think I'm seeing this. So I'm gonna draw something. Let's have a look. Let's do a big bulging eye here, and a big bulging eye there. I'm going to start. There we go. Put some teeth in. Put some nostrils in. There we go. And if I turn it round, don't know if you can see. I guess it could be a wolf or something like that. So you can have lots of fun. And actually, I have made one of these earlier. So let me show you. I was thinking earlier. dragon as well, Fiona. Oh, a dragon, yeah. Could dragon be. to me. Yeah, so, but, you know, it can be, it doesn't have to be that. I could have turned it into a flower. I could have turned it into something else. Whatever you see, it's your own imagination. So lots of fun here. Um, and they can make some pretty cool designs as well. But also trying to work out why do they all fit together? because I started off with a square and now I've got this irregular shape. Why is it all the shapes fit together like this? Why do they tessellate? And some really nice things to try and work out as well. 
Right, let me just quickly go back then and I will share my screen so that we can just finish the last part of our extravaganza. So I think the next screen actually is just me playing around. There we go, with some more translations. And well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quickly just say thank you so much for joining us. Um, remember these are all on a handout that will come to you. So hopefully you'll have lots of fun doing this. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure and I'm so pleased so many of you could join us today. And I'm gonna hand over to Andy, who's gonna say a final few words. Yes, just really to, to emphasise what, what Fiona just said. Thank you very much for, for coming along. Thank you particularly for you know, putting your, your, um, your words and, and things in the, the chat. That was particularly helpful, particularly to me with that game as well. So yeah, I'll just emphasise again yeah, that we did actually win that one. So thank you for that. Anybody who, who gave us some instruction on there, anybody who gave us answers to the questions that we had before. So really just to, to point you towards the, the summer challenge, hopefully you've, you've enjoyed what you've done today but we've got a whole bunch more stuff that's available to you um if you're here with your your teachers encourage them to have a look as well so if you want to get involved with the the summer challenge it's also based around this idea of building a, a greener future it's looking at if you've heard of things sort of stem is what we call it so i'm sure some of you know but the, the it's uh, an acronym so the s stands for science the t for technology the E for the engineering and M for maths. It's all based around that. So it's not just maths on there. Um, one of the schools I've been working with already has built um, some water wheels. That's one of the challenges in there. Water turbines, I think, they actually did as well. Another one is a solar oven, and they've been trying to melt chocolate in that one. I've seen <laughs> that. That's working really well. They're all you know, nice little challenges like that. There's a whole bunch of those. They're all available to you for free. You can do them in school. You could um, take them home, do them over the summer if you wish. So there's a whole range of those. You can find those on our, our website as well. You can see the website name at the bottom. Um, for those schools, I recognize some of the names here. For those schools that I work with, if you want any more information, just drop me an email. Um, if uh, it's a different person at WIS that you work with, drop them an email. They'll uh, likewise be able to help you as well. I think... That's everything. Have I missed anything, Fiona? Only that if you have a go with any of these activities that we've been doing today, please send us a photograph. We'd love to see some of you doing these activities. That'd be absolutely great. Thank you. Yeah, that takes us to the end. Thank you very much.